welcome to everyone who is on site and a very special welcome to those who will be joining us online later. You are all very warmly welcome. May you feel God's love for you. And may he touch all of our hearts as we worship him this morning. Our theme for this morning is resisting temptation with the help of God. So that's what we'll be thinking about. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Marilyn and I'm a licensed lay minister here and I have the pleasure of being with Reverend John Rees this morning and it is our joy to be worshipping with you this morning. But before we have our call to worship, I have the joy and pleasure of reading bands for the first time. And I believe, Claudio, you are with us this morning. You are very welcome. I'm very sorry to hear that your fiancé isn't feeling too well today. We pray he'll be feeling much better soon. But I published the bands of marriage between Dan Darrell O'Hagan and Claudia Sabina Elizabeth Emery. They are both single and they are both in the parish of Hilperton and Staverton. This is for the first time of asking if any one of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it now. Well, that's good news. <laughs> Ooh, that's the first one. <laughs> so may we pray for Daryl and Claudia. Father God, we thank you and we praise you that you have brought these two people together that they have found love with and for each other. Father, be with them in their preparations of marriage and be with them as they travel on through their married life. May you be at the centre of their marriage, Lord, we pray, blessing them and walking beside them and with them. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So a call to worship. As darkness gives way to light and winter sleep to fresh beginnings, we come, we come today, today to be reminded of God's love for us. Like the green shoots of renewed life stirring beneath the soil, we, we welcome an awakening of God's word in our lives. In this time of reflection and repentance, we affirm our identity, we claim our security as children of God. And now prayer of approach. God of the mountains and the sky, of our minds and our hearts, we look to you in awe, we reach out to you in longing, we worship you in gratitude. We sing to you in joy. For you are our God and we are your people today and always. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand with me and sing before the throne of God above.
When Satan tempts me to despair And tells me of the guilt within Upward I look and see him there Who made an end to all my sin Because the sinless Savior died My sinful soul is counted free to rid ourselves of what clutters our lives and all that distracts us from the simple truth of your love for us. Your prophets have called us to change the way we worship, to make internal sacrifices instead of external ones, to seek justice and loving kindness and to walk humbly with you each and every one of our days. If we do not give anything up for Lent, then let us at least give up this, that we might cease living in the ways that disconnect us from you. For every one of our steps is like a circle around your temple. Perhaps this Lent, we can give up our way and give ourselves to your way for us. So lead and guide us on this Lenten way. May we walk with Jesus towards the hill just outside Jerusalem. May we, like him, take up our cross and follow, spending each moment of our lives living responsibly to you, just as Christ himself did. For that way is the faithful way. Amen. And now it's that time, that time when we come, not with fear and trembling, but when we come knowing if we truly confess our sins, our loving Father, will forgive us and forget them. So I invite you again to join with me. God of all creation, forgive us when we lose perspective and our world shrinks to our size, not yours. Forgive us and nourish our vision. Forgive us when we look away from you when we feel empty and grasp what is not ours to take. Forgive us and nourish our vision. 
Forgive us when the choices we make are self-centered and we are indifferent to the needs of the wider community. Forgive us and nourish our vision. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May we, who were once far away from Jesus, be brought nearer to him who gives us forgiveness and peace. May God forgive us and help us overcome our faults. Amen. And so the prayer, the special prayer for today, the collect. Heavenly Father, your Son battled with the powers of darkness and grew closer to you in the desert. Help us to use these days to grow in wisdom and prayer, that we may witness to your saving love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Linda is now going to come and bring us our first reading. Thank you, Linda. And the first reading this morning comes from Romans, chapter 8, verses 8 to 13. The message is very close at hand. It is on our lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by openly declaring your faith that, we are, that you are saved. As the scriptures tell us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are all the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand again to sing 40 days and 40 nights.
Please remain standing as I bring to us the Gospel for today. So hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The Temptation of Jesus then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the river Jordan. He was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. Jesus ate nothing all the time and became very hungry. Then the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God. Tell these stones to become a loaf of bread. But Jesus told him, No, the scripture says, People do not live by bread alone. Then the devil took him up and revealed to him all the kingdoms of the world in one moment of time. I will give you the glory of these kingdoms and authority over them, the devil said, because they are mine to give to anyone I please. I will give it all to you if you will worship me. Jesus replied, the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God, and serve him only. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. For scripture says, he will order his angels to protect and guard you, and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, the scriptures also say you must not test the Lord your God. When the devil had finished, finished tempting Jesus, he left him until the next opportunity came. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. Reverend John is now going to lead us in the reflection. Thank you very much, Marilyn. Do sit down, everyone. Heavenly Father, as we reflect on our readings today, particularly the reading about the temptation of Jesus, may we know how we can resist temptation and have confidence and trust that you can help us with that and empower us to do it. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. One of the prayers we say at every service is the Lord's Prayer. And as we say it, we say these words, Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. As with so many of the prayers that we say, the words are simple, but it's good for us to think about what they mean. And that's what we're going to do this morning. Today we're going to think about what this means. And... Um, you might be a bit surprised at where, the way we're going to begin. If you can't see the screen, the, the key parts of the talk are going to be on the screen, so do feel able to come nearer uh, if you can't. Well, I wonder if you can recognise those superheroes. Uh, in Youth Alpha, on Friday, we were thinking about superheroes, so that's led, led me along this strand, and indeed... Um, uh, Vaughan and Theo came up with some superheroes I don't even know about. But um, any volunteers? Who, which is the superhero nearest me? Can any of you, can one of you say? Who do you think that is? Any ideas? Or any of them? You recognise? 
those are pictures. Not sure. They're old superheroes. Um, Vaughan, can you name the one nearest me? Spider-Man. Spider-Man, that's right. We've got Spider-Man nearest me. The one who I was most familiar with is the one in the middle. I'm sure even some of our older members of the congregation can recognise that. Who's that then? Batman. Batman, thank you. And what about the one nearest the wall? Wonder, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Thank you. Three superheroes. Uh, really superheroes best known in earlier generations, uh, perhaps with the exception of Spider-Man, but all sorts of others around now. Let's move on to the next slide. Superheroes, of course, have extraordinary powers. And if you were a superhero, what would you want to be able to do that you can't actually do? What would you like to be able to do? I'd love to have some volunteers who would like to say what you... Any, any suggestions? Fly, kill Putin. Fly, kill Putin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think we've probably all been... Uh, um, many of us would have been there uh, with that evil... That, we'll come back to the evil and uh, the awful evil going on just before the end of the talk. Any other suggestions of what would you like to do? Stop hunger. Stop hunger. I think that's such an important one. One of the things that worries me at the moment is the fact that because we rightly are focusing so much on Ukraine and the awful needs there, that um, the account of so many starving in Afghanistan is almost disappearing from the news. So we mustn't forget the troubles elsewhere. But flying, I'd love to be able to fly up and have an aerial view over Hilperton. I'm not sure, the other one is walking through walls in the picture. I'm not particularly sure that I'd like to be able to just walk here and disappear. I'm not sure I get that one, but, um, but it was one of the ones that I had a photograph of. But just think about what you might like to do. And there is a rationality in wondering why we're thinking about superheroes now. And that's because superheroes have baddies, and superheroes, even if the baddies sometimes seem to be on top, the superheroes always win. So, can we have the next slide? Jesus, of course, is the world's greatest superhero, and heaven's greatest superhero too. He had extraordinary powers because he, he was not only human, is not only human, he is God too. So we've got two pictures of miracles there that actually show Jesus' amazing powers. Uh, would anybody like to, let's take the one nearest to me. Anybody want to say what you think is going on there. It is one of the most familiar ones. Peter. Um, he turned the water into wine. Thank you, Peter. Yes, it's turning water into wine. I used to be on a stall at a school fete every Christmas. And people used, and it was a water into wine stall. And there were gift bags of either wine or water. And people had to guess what there was in the bags. And they took the wine away if they, if they chose the right bag. And, if, and if, if I'd had five pounds for everyone who said, oh, can't you two turn this water into wine? I would have, well, the school would have been rich. Just think, if I'd got that superpower, we wouldn't have any financial troubles in this church. We'd be selling the best wine available, wouldn't we? But of course, Jesus revealed that he was both God and man by doing that. As humans, we can't. What about the other one? What's going on there? Anyone work it out? There's a hole in the room. Sorry? Thank you, but a paralysed man who was lowered through the roof and Jesus healed him. Jesus had... People used to come and crowd around Jesus because of his power of healing. It's right through the Gospels. 
And actually, if we pray for, as we pray for healing for people today, we pray that in the authority of Jesus. We are still asking Jesus to heal. And if actually, if we are praying over people and they are healed, we're praying for people in hospital and they are healed, that isn't, that isn't in our power, it's the power of God at work. We're alongside the skill of medics who, in many cases, who have been given their power by God. Let's move on. Jesus, of course, and this was very clear from our other reading, is the world's greatest superhero because he died on the cross and rose again. And through that, he's defeated the power of evil and has defeated death ultimately forever. It means that we don't die, but it does mean that actually we are promised, if we have even a glimpse of faith in Jesus, that our souls live on when we die. We will be with God forever. The best is yet to be. But today we're thinking particularly about Jesus being tempted and not giving in. And we're going to think about the three things in that reading and what we can learn from them. The devil initially tempted Jesus with, uh, with bread. He'd not eaten for ages, for a very long time. And we think of those brothers and sisters across the world who are not eating at the moment, who don't have enough to eat wherever they are. He was appallingly hungry. God knows what it's like through Jesus to be in that situation. But he didn't give in. Because he knew his heavenly father had him in the desert for the purpose. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. We live through our relationship with God. God who does provide us with food. And what this is about is, can we resist the temptation to satisfy our own desires first, rather than placing our life in God's hands? Is our first desire... Rather than to worship God and ask God what God wants us to do with our lives, to own the smartest car or the best house or the newest computer game, where are our priorities? Is the same. Are we willing to place God first and trust that God will then provide for our needs? Let's have the next slide. And then Jesus was tempted by the devil who showed him all of the kingdoms of the world and said, if you worship me, I'll give you authority over all of them. It wasn't the devil's place to offer that authority if that authority belonged to God the Father. It was no more the devil's authority to do, offer that than Putin's to invade Ukraine. But are we tempted to have false gods? Do we worship the desire for power, for promotion at work? Do we, what other things that distract us from worshipping God? And it very often is connected with power and authority and actually we see that in the world around us. So let's have a third of these slides. Jesus was tempted, but he didn't give in. Tempted to, he knew that if he jumped off the temple, the devil knew the power of angels, the power of the Father to stop him falling from the ground to hurt himself. But he knew, Jesus knew this wasn't what God wanted him to do. So he didn't put God to the test in that way. Well, I don't think we're very often put to, putting God to the test by jumping off the spire of the church or anything like that. But are there ways where we put God to the test? Do we sometimes bargain with God? If you do this, God, then I'll come to church every week. You can think of your own examples of that. What would be in the dot, dot, dot? What might you be bargaining with God about? 
We're called to trust God. God loves us so much that we don't need to bargain. We need to pray and to trust. So we can resist temptation with God's help. Because through Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, when we seek to be close to God, can enable us very often to resist the temptation to go our own way. But inevitably we do make mistakes, which brings us to the next slide. We all get it wrong. We all do things which don't please God, that make us feel guilty. But when we make mistakes and seek God's forgiven, we're given a new start. That is a picture of a woman who was caught in sexual sin and brought before, brought before Jesus by this crowd dragging her. And Jesus wrote on the floor in the dust and said, You who are without sin, throw a stone. And they all slunk off. So Jesus was left there with the woman. And he forgave her and said, Go and sin no more. And Jesus says, <coughs> Excuse me, the same to us. When we make mistakes, you are forgiven, but don't do that again. We're forgiven again and again and again. <clears throat> so if you're burdened by sin today, to pray a prayer saying sorry, know you're forgiven, and know that if you place your life in God's hands, ask for the power of the Spirit to be with you, you'll be given the strength to make a new start. And so to the final slide. <clears throat> it doesn't always feel it, but God's love and power is stronger than evil, although the power is very real. The left-hand picture there is a picture which has been on the news from Ukraine. And a lot of Christians in Ukraine have been pointing it out. It's an angel over the city in the cloud formation. And many people have been given hope by the sight of that angel. And as Clive Murray in his reports has been talking about, their faith is giving many people in that country where many have a Christian faith, the strength to keep going. And many of us here know that in our darkest hours, Although, thankfully, I don't think any of us have faced anything as awful as being faced in Ukraine. That God is with us in those darkness, in that darkness, and gives us the strength to keep going. And that is what we pray for the people of Ukraine. Love is, God's love is stronger than the darkness. God is there with them. We pray that ultimately peace will prevail. I mean, indeed, there were many times in the life of the early church where they faced overwhelming odds. And God was there with them. And the final picture, I think, speaks of one of the ways God's love is being shown so clearly. God's love is there in darkness. Uh, you may have heard of the people waiting in Poland and Germany in hundreds by railway stations, willing to take refugees from Ukraine into their homes. And that is how love is, Christ-like love is being shown now. And our call is to keep praying for the people of Ukraine and anybody who is in dark. And our call is to offer practical help when we can, through financial means, through collections of clothes and other items. And that is something I know we're already doing, and something we're committed to. And there's details of how to do that in our Canal Side News this week. So trust everyone that God's love is there with us in all situations, 
God wants us to place him first. And God wants us to share in his concern for the rest of the world. We're going to listen, finally, to a song of trust. You lead us through the wilderness. We won't survive by bread alone, but by your word and guided by your hands. And let's, as we listen, make that our prayer, that God will guide us by his hand as we journey on, and that God too will guide those in really difficult situations in Ukraine, Afghanistan, or wherever they are. Amen. giving thanks for God's unfailing love and his faithfulness to us and his companionship with us. I invite you, if you feel able, to join with me in a statement of faith. We continue our journey of faith 
using our hearts and minds and affirm our trust in God who leads us on. Do you believe in trust in God the Father who made the world? I believe and trust in God. Do you believe and trust in God's Son, Jesus Christ, who has redeemed us? I believe and trust in Jesus Christ. Do you believe and trust in God's Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? I believe and trust in the Holy Spirit. And so now we are going to stand and sing How Deep the Father's Love for Us. you will help us resist temptation and ensure that our actions 
have a positive effect in the world. Be with us every step of the way so that we can know our identity in you, hear your word and understand its true meaning as we devote ourselves to you. Let us say the prayer of Lent together. O oh God, help us to use this season of Lent to examine our attachments and to sense where you invite us to live more simply and deeply. Shine the light of your love into the private corners of our lives, where we have acquired so much clutter that it has begun to restrict our freedom. Grant us the strength to free ourselves from appetites and needs that drive us into taking, having and wanting more than we need or have time for. Teach us that in letting go, we become free rather than deprived, generous rather than covetous, and spacious rather than restricted. We offer you our Lenten observance, and today we place our feet on the road to Easter and walk the way that you have walked before us. Amen. I now invite you to join me in a prayer for the Ukraine. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over peace and war, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children, at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Lord, we pray for the protection for the citizens of Maripol. May their evacuation be swift and safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that as we look at what we have and consider what we do, help us to relate to the world and seek to always be faithful to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for our local schools, businesses and services. We ask for your blessing on all who are involved in our community, that we may serve one another and love as you love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in need, those who are lonely, those who are depressed, those who are ill, and those particularly on our own hearts, thinking of Amanda. Bring comfort to all who suffer in body, mind and spirit, and bless them with your grace, peace and generous love. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Loving God, we remember those who have died and those who are bereaved, especially the families of Iris Webb, Billy Withers and David. We also remember those known only to us but loved by you.
Father, grant them all a place in your eternal kingdom. Merciful Father, Set accept these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Continuing to pray, we pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us, the prayer that unites us as one, praying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please stand with me as we sing our last hymn this morning. Guide me, O thou great Redeemer. Christ, the superhero, has triumphed death. That surely is something to sing about and give thanks for. Those we have loved, those we have lost, now see him face to face. May that be a comfort to anyone today who is mourning the loss of a loved one. But some notices. Do please look either online or there might be some of the notice sheets at the back of church. Um, there's some wonderful information in here. There's some information about how to, if you wish, give items, specific items, to um, St Margaret's Hall in Bradford-on-Avon. They're looking for specific things now, okay? So if you want to give paracetamol or things like that, do look at the list 
and take them there. It's easy to find. There are also some wonderful things going on this week. Um, here we will have friendship group at Mary Mags on Thursday. Please pray for that. And also tots at the tin on Friday mornings. Please pray for the tots and the carers and the team that um, are with them. You know, may, may we all to come together as family. Please pray for this afternoon service at Warden Two. But there is um, a wonderful event going on. If you'd like to, there's going to be a prayer time. Praying for the Ukraine. Um, that's going to be on Saturday the 12th of March from 9.30 till 10.30 at Mary Magdalene's Horse Road. And the church will remain open till 3 p.m. for a time of prayer. And you know, my friends, our prayers do make a difference. They really do. We have power in prayer. Please do not give up praying because we don't know how close we are to God's kingdom having the victory. Any more notices, John, you'd like to highlight? I think you've more or less got it, but one other, but thank you. There is a prayer tree at the back of this church, an opportunity to continue to write prayers, and I will be adding, putting some more prayers that you might like to pray at the back of church. Uh, it's possible to come in and pray quietly when church is open, uh, and the same is true in St George's Semington as well as in St Michael's. So lots of opportunities. Pray at home, pray in the church. Pray when you're going to work. Pray when you're going to do your shopping. Because God is always listening, always ready to hear the prayers of his children. So some closing prayers. Lord, give me eyes to see. Give me a heart to care. Give me hands to act. Amen. 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 Lord Jesus, may we see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much indeed, Marilyn, for your leadership this morning. And also to our uh, to Sarah for leading the prayers and Linda for the reading, and as always to James who uh, will knit all the technology together and get get the service out uh, this afternoon. On uh, I've forgotten what the technology is. <laughs> YouTube. Thank you. I use it all the time. Anyway, a final blessing. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you all throughout this Lent and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.